If you like Pina Colada. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, why did you start like I that? I don't know. It was in my head. <sighs> it got in my head right before we started recording. I, and I, I, felt, I felt a little demon got in me and said, <sighs> you have to start the podcast with it. Well, this is the Stay F. Homkins podcast. That's right. Hi, my name is Paul F. Tompkins. Hi, my name is Janie Hadda Tompkins. She's an actress. She's a comedian. We are a married couple living in Los Angeles, and this is our after dinner podcast. Ah, yes, it is our November episode. Thank you for tuning in. This is our free episode to all. We do have also bonus content. It's time for your monthlies. <laughs> That's what we call the podcast. It's time for your monthlies. So this is the first. <laughs> so it's the Friday um, after Election Day. That's right. 2024 in America. Yes. And obviously we're thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> I love tariffs. <laughs> Paul's a single issue voter. I just said, hey, if anybody's going to bring. Oh Whoever's promising the most tariffs, that's who I'm voting for. I know. You have that T-shirt that yeah. says that. Yeah. So the tariffs thing. If you've got tariffs, you've got me. Wow. Well, now, really I don't won. know what tariffs are, and I <laughs> hope they're not going to be a problem. I All mean, I know is I want my groceries to be cheaper. That's why I voted for tariffs. Okay. Well, I... Yeah, we're trying to make sense of things, guys. <laughs> not, not a whole lot to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like, well, that just happened. <laughs> this this election is a classic. Well, that just happened. <laughs> well, that just happened. There, it doesn't get any more. Well, that just happened than this past election. I have been. In a state, it kind of, I've been, oh, Cuckoo's coming Cuckoo, out early. you're late. <laughs> Cuckoo heard tariffs. Is this the earliest Cuckoo's ever been on? It feels like it. It might be. I mean, we've never started with Cuckoo on the, on it. We should try <laughs> one of these times to start with Cuckoo. <laughs> that seems like a lot of work. To wait for the hour? <laughs> <laughs> I'm having my weekend water in my weekend water glass. As am I. Mine is um, virgin. So is mine. Okay, so this is what happened. I should let's take our listeners through what happened. Yes. So with us, you mean? Cor- yes. <laughs> Not with America. No, with us. With yeah. us. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think they probably know <laughs> what's going on with America. Okay. So the Puritans wanted the freedom <laughs> to practice their extreme religion. Okay. <laughs> so the election was coming up. And friends were like, I'm nervous. I don't want to watch it alone. Because I was like, just going to, we were just going to watch it alone. Or just like deal with it alone. Yeah, I think that's what we were kind of assuming for the longest time. Because like everyone's been on, is the word, is it tenterhooks? Tenterhooks, yes. Pins and needles, if you will. Everyone was on tenterhooks. On tinter hooks. Everyone was standing on their tiptoes. On their tinter hooks. And so it was like, okay. Y'all on tinter hooks. And then Aaron Ginsburg was like, oh, come to our house or whatever. And I was like, I can't. I can't go to the valley. I can't go to the valley to watch this. Like nothing against the valley. I just can't go to the valley to watch yes. this and then have to get on a freeway mm-hmm. and have to drive. Like, no, it was like. I didn't have it. What if it was the freeway of love in a pink Cadillac? (laughs) That would have been different, but it wasn't. Yeah. No, it wasn't. (laughs) It was definitely not the freeway of love. Also, like, my car was in the shop. Like, my car didn't start that. Anyway, it's a whole thing. So, (laughs) So it was like, no, let's have everyone here to our pad Hmm. to on the text chain. On the text chain. And I was like, or, I mean, y'all could come here. And then I checked with Aaron and Krista, and they were like, it's fine. We don't want to, we real actually didn't want to host. <laughs> yeah. And it worked out because most of the people lived closer to closer us. Closer to I think. us on the yeah. text chain than, than, than them. And so I was like, I guess I got to get food. I went and got food for everyone because I couldn't like cook. I was like, you know, I couldn't cook. No. 
I didn't have it in me. I was no. like nervous, but I, I knew it was close, but I, I have to say, like, honestly, I thought it was going to be a very decisive night for Kamala Harris. I, that's that's what I was hoping for. And I, I tried to keep, you know how sometimes when you want something to happen. Yeah. You have a, a sort of wish in your brain that you don't allow yourself to fully think. Like clearly. Do you know what I mean? It's <sighs> like, I'm going to keep this sort of feeling in my heart, in the back of my head, until it happens. I feel like a lot of people had said that to me or sort of use that philosophy, but I don't subscribe to that philosophy <laughs> because I just feel like you're going to feel what you're going to feel when when things come ar- across your lap. Yes. So, like, you may as well just feel what you're feeling before the thing. You're, instead of keep calm, carry on, you're more <laughs> when in doubt, freak out. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been like <laughs> hanging on to that? No, it just came to me. <laughs> and I can see it on a t-shirt with a little crown in the middle. I mean, it is true. Like I just kind of feel my feelings and also like I do future trip a lot, mm-hmm. like in my daily life. Like yeah. that's just sort of how my, you know, neuro, neurology, is that the right word? Neuro, sure. di- neuro, whatever. <laughs> Neuropathy Brain (laughs) (laughs) The old gray matter The old gray Like I'll like You know Like buy a lottery ticket And literally be Like thinking Wow this is gonna change my life In such a profound way And I better start making Like a plan about it Or like I'll audition For a big part where I'm like This is Oh Like I auditioned for that Marvel Mm -hmm. thing Earlier this year And I was like I I think I'm going to get this. Mm-hmm. Like, I just, I don't know why I thought that. I just felt like really connected to the, I was like, I, so I was like, I'm going to have to really think about how this is going to change. Like, I just go. See, you should be like me, audition for things and then forget all about them until you read about them in the trades. <laughs> <laughs> well, eventually I do forget about them when my phone never rings. And then I read about them in the mm-hmm. trades, which is probably like a more, I don't understand this whole, like, I don't allow myself to wish or I don't allow myself to hope because I feel like I run on, like, my fuel is like daydreaming. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how to do that. Like, I definitely think about, like, the alternative. Like, well, it could be that it won't go her way on the night. Like, what is that? But then I'm like, yeah. no, why think? Why daydream about the thing that you don't want? But You know what I mean? It's essentially, it's just a different uh, angle of anxiety. Oh, okay. Not allowing yourself to think about it or pushing the thought from your mind I see is a different saying. kind of anxiety. But it's anxiety It's the same thing. It's yeah. like the same thing. It all ends up the same place. <laughs> Right. And so you're just going to feel what you feel whenever what happens happens. Yeah. And then, sorry, I'm sipping on my mocktail. So on the, so like on the night, so everyone came over and we got the, all the food and everything. And I, it was not like a celebratory, I, you know, it was celebratory. It was seeing, we were like, there was camaraderie. Yes. I don't think anybody was going into it like the, the way we went into 2016 Mm-mm. thinking, obviously no one's going to vote for this clown. Honestly, I thought like the also the media, which that's a whole other story. Which yeah. I'm, I have a real fucking grudge against the media right now. But yeah. like they were sort of painting things like, well, remember in 2020, we didn't know for four days and it's not going to be, you know, we're not going to know. Yeah. We're not just like prepare for like these countings and countings and countings and all this business. And so it was kind of like, well, maybe we won't know. And then we fucking knew. Because, mm-hmm. like, it just started, like, not going well. And then it was, you know, I think I've been in a weird kind of fugue state about, oh, okay. Alexa's acting up over there. I, I've been in a weird fugue, fugue state about it. But on the other hand, it was like, the answer was the answer, yeah. you know? And then yeah. it was like, wow, okay. And he also is probably going to walk away with the popular vote too, Mm -hmm. which stunned me because he's never won a popular vote. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I was like, huh, um, that's interesting. Um, of course all the ballots haven't been turned in. I think right now they're about 3 million votes apart, Mm -hmm. you know, but 
it was kind of like, um, yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> I, mean, I think that's a perfect summation. I, I think I think you speak for a lot of us. I just didn't like it. Yeah, I didn't like it. I really didn't like it. Yeah, I didn't like the outcome. Obviously, I'm a, you know I've accepted the outcome, but I'm mm-hmm. still a little bit in disbelief over the absurdity of it. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of like, um, you know, I have I I am obviously trying to make sense of the whole thing, like. Oh, it was this or that or all of the above or this or that, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And it's like always, though, like it's always like a combination of a million things. Yeah. Like it's never like it was the one. It's the economy. I know. Everyone wants to call it. Everyone. Everybody wants to say one that here's the thing that they did wrong. And it's like, okay, I I personally (laughs) thought that they ran. I I mean, look. They ran an energized campaign. I mean, I felt very energized. You're running against somebody who really should not have any followers at all, (laughs) right? So it's not like it's normal. Yeah. And I think that it's very easy to say after the fact, here's what they should have done. And it's like, you don't know that that would have made that much of a difference. You could go back, you could rewind. Here's what Mitch McConnell should have done. He should have voted to impeach him over the January 6th. Yeah. So, like, the guy wouldn't have even been in our fucking news feed about the indictments and shit if Mitch McConnell had fucking voted to impeach him. That. Oh, this is new. A huge turning point (laughs) for us, a point of no return for us as a nation. Uh huh. Wait, can I guess? Yeah. 9-11. That's one of them. Oh, okay. But I think... (laughs) Wait, that's not what you were going to... No, I'm going back further than that. Wait, I know what it was. What is it? Can I guess? Yes. That we stole the land from Native people. That's a little too far back. But that was a turning point. (laughs) That... (laughs) Yes. That's true. Okay. Wait. Okay. What were you going to say the turning point was? Is it between 9-11 and now? (laughs) No. I'm talking about in terms of electoral politics. Okay. Okay. When Richard Nixon got pardoned. Yeah. That's some bullshit. That meant every president was going to do whatever the fuck they wanted to do. Uh Uh-huh. There were going to be no repercussions. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. So George W. Bush, no war crimes. He fucked around and he never got to find out. Yeah. You know? We had that horrible war and nothing, nobody was held responsible for the fact that it was built on a lie. No one lost a job. You know what I mean? Oh, he was reelected yeah. to a second term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was stunned. Listen, I sp- I've spent a lot of election nights. Now that I'm getting into my, you know, like like I'm 33 now. Mm-hmm. Like I've had a lot of time mm-hmm. on this planet, <laughs> <laughs> give or take a few years or mm-hmm. decades or whatever. Um, is that uh, I've had a lot of disappointing presidential elections. Yeah, of course. This isn't my first rodeo. Yeah. This is not my first rodeo. Mm -hmm. I can remember as a kid feeling the anxiety of my parents when Reagan won. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like surprised Mm -hmm. because, yeah. But, you know, I've had a lot. Of, so I've been having some conversations with people. So everyone was doing like mental health check-ins, obviously. I talked to a couple of my Gen X guy pals, you know, <laughs> getting, pers- you know, I like to, you know, I like to have the perspective of everyone. So like, here's where I'm at mm-hmm. because I've gotten like a range of perspective from my Gen X guys, yeah. including my brother, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, whatever. But it's like the sort of uh, kind of philosophy or whatever has ranged from the p- pendulum could swing in two years mm-hmm. to like a, a blue wave. Or, right. Again. Uh, and... They can only accomplish 
so much of their list in two years. Right, right, right. Before right. that. Yeah. So, like, they'll have to sort of accept the sort of incremental version of yeah. their sweeping Handmaid's Tale, whatever. <laughs> right. To, I'm not going to say who, someone who's very lefty in my life saying, I even considered buying a gun <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because I'm scared of these motherfuckers playing militia and showing up at my yeah. door or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, that's not a good solution, you know, mm-hmm. for that. But like, you know, and it's, it's like, and then I've also myself have been kind of like t- trying to figure out like, is this about, is it really about the grift, mm-hmm. right? Like, they just want no regulations on anything, mm-hmm. and that's all it is, right? So all this other bullshit stuff, like the cultural war bullshit stuff, is kind of like it served its purpose. You know what I mean? When you say they, you mean the, the new administration. The Republican Party. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like in the powers that be, like the billionaires that, yeah. fu- that fueled... Yeah. That fueled the whole thing. The, the billionaires, I think, for the most part, all they care about is the wealth aspect of it. I don't think they, they give a shit about the culture stuff, except for Peter Thiel. Well, Elon. Yeah, well, Elon's Elon, kid has to leave the country now. I know, but before, Elon, it's like, okay, let, we'll, we'll get into him. But I feel like for the most part, they are just like, yeah, we just want to have our money. We don't want to pay taxes. Right. And then... The party itself, there's enough of them that, you know, in addition to to becoming rich in these weird ways and all the people they get money from, there's enough of them that really do want this... This Christian thing. Super Christian conservative. Christo, Christo, yeah. 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 And, like, now that they overturn Roe, they're like, Oh, we can actually do some of this. We can get rid of gay marriage. We can get rid of, you know. That's so um, fucked up, man. We're going to do mass deportations of immigrants, you know, all this shit. And, you know, I, I think that for the average voter, I think there's some people who are in the cult. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of other people who are just like, I always vote Republican. I think that's a lot of people, to be honest. And then there's some people that just don't pay attention to shit at all. Well, oh my God, I was having... And what they've heard was Trump gonna is going to lower, lower inflation. inflation. Yeah. So I had a conversation with someone yesterday that is, I guess, I guess the term is like a low information vote. Maybe they're not a voter. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Or, you know. And I was sort of dancing around like, how are you feeling about this week and current events, you know? And they were like, oh, it's fine. (laughs) I don't really, I don't know. I don't really do media. I don't do media or or whatever. And I was like, oh, wait, I think that means that there are like armies of people out there. Mm Mm-hmm. That were raised. And this is another thing is like, I was like, why is it like some people are engaged and some people are checked out? Mm -hmm. And I think it's a values thing because I think you and I are of like a certain socioeconomic kind of and generation where we were educated to be conscientious citizens, like good citizens, you know, or maybe it was like the Catholic school thing. You know what I mean? I, I have a different theory. Uh-huh. And it's that some people, if it doesn't affect them directly, they don't feel the need to pay attention to it. But everything affects everything. I mean, in my... Of course it... Well, that's the thing is that... Like it's all... In our, it's all, like you think this doesn't affect you now, but it very well could very soon. But also just like the nature of being a human in the world. Mm-hmm. Like... People will, don't understand like the connection of actions and I, yeah, I reactions and I stuff know. like that. I think for some people it's like, ah, this is politics. I don't really pay attention to politics. 
And that's, God, I get that. You know, honestly, but I'm is, fucking jealous. Today, I'm, I'm like, that makes me feel like. I'm not I, though. I Today I am. Today I feel that way. I'm yeah. like, what is that, you know, beautiful, ignorant. I mean, it's a, it's kind of a privileged, it's a little privileged. 100%. It's like, mm, okay. To not. You don't have, you don't love people that might be like, have their rights yeah. stripped from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't like have close people in your life yeah. that might face uh, an increase in violence yeah. because of the rhetoric that's been propagandizing yeah, the fucking entire country. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But, you know, I here's how... Uh, the way I'm feeling today is actually kind of... <laughs> I feel kind of positive today. In what way? What's the positive? Well, I feel like... you like know, Like now we know? We talked about now we know, and I would rather feel sort of... Positive about taking care of myself, taking care of you, the people that I love, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and Which you know, is, enjoy you know, life, but keep my eyes open. To you know what I wits, mean? Keep your wits about you. Yeah, rather than be scared, I would rather just be aware. My brother told me situational awareness. He said sanity is resistance. Mm-hmm. And he was ju- just basically like, keep your wits about you. Yeah. It's almost, it's almost like quarantine. Where I feel like now that I've been through four years of this fucking mm-hmm. guy, I know how to do it now. Yeah, I'm I gonna know turn how, a, I learned I'm gonna from turn my his mistakes. face and his voice off because <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I'm not. I don't want to have to. And also, by the way, he's old. He ain't gonna be. I don't. He's, think he's not gonna be the guy giving the speech at the 2028 Los Angeles Olympics. No. It's gonna be yeah, Baby Vance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think he's long for this world. It's Baby Vance. And also, like, because I was also talking to Andy Reeser today, and I was like. He, you know, because he was like, he just wants to be out of jail. You know, like he yeah. he just escaped. And it's like if he were smart or maybe, you know, is like he would just pardon himself, mm. retire, give it to baby Vance and then go play golf at Mar-a-Lago like he wants to. Can I share with you a, a, my extreme conspiracy theory that I don't really believe in? Okay. But it's something that I could see happening. So, okay. you know, we're wa- so we're watching. I can't wait because I love conspiracy theories and I have a few I want to run sure. by you after this. We're watching Trump at all these rallies, right? Before the election, you mean? Before the election. Yeah, yeah. And he's seen, because we certainly have not watched any since. And he seems like he doesn't want to be there. He seems <laughs> tired and annoyed. He gave a blowjob to a microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he seems like he's not into it. And my extreme theory is, they did figure out how to rig this election. Mm-hmm. They bought this election. Like mm-hmm. they had all yeah, these, they, bought it. they yeah. had all these fucking billionaires behind them that surely could have figured out a way to rig this. Mm-hmm. And so the reason he was so tired and bored at these events is because he already knew it was in the bag. He said it in July. Did, don't you? In, he, he gave a rally in July where he said, "You guys don't need to vote for me because I already have enough votes." He said it at one of his rallies. I don't remember that. I remember you'll never have to vote again. He also said that, yeah. but he he also in his rambles right. also said, "Don't even worry about it. I already have enough votes." Wow, I didn't catch that one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are people who go through his speeches, and yeah, so yeah, I yeah. knew that he said that. Good for yeah. that. So, so yeah, but was, I don't. I don't a hundred percent believe that. So he's super. Oh wait, well, that was the end of the conspiracy theory. Yes. Just that they rigged it for that him. That they rigged it so far in advance. But he still had to go through the motions. He still had to go through the motions and <laughs> almost get killed. And so he danced for 45. <laughs> oh, well, wait. So do you think... So now that we're getting into conspiracy land, because yeah. I've got a few myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I want to ask you if you believe the assassination attempt was an organic kid Rando who wanted to accelerate, like an accelerationist, a uh, rando. I, or do you think there was some kind of mechanism behind it? And it was staged. I, Trump I, was no, I think it was real. I, I think f- to stage it would have to be the precision that you would have to enact for that to be pulled off the way we saw it. I don't think... I kind I of vacillate on it. Like, I, I agree with that. That's like 
what you just said is more the Occam's razor of it all. Yeah. Is that, but what happened to his ear though? Like, but here's, well, the, cons- here's the, the- here's the conspiracy theory I buy about the ear is mm-hmm. that it hit some kind of glass teleprompter. Cause there right. was like some reports of that happening. Right. And one of the shards of glass nicked his ear. Yeah. And that's why, but it was a better story to say a bullet, God saved mm. me from a bullet by one inch. I mean, look, I wouldn't put it past him to lie about that, but... And also, that's why he could stand up and say, fight, 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 because he just thought it was like a broken piece of glass as opposed to like, you know, a warp speed yeah. bullet, you the, know? The one thing I don't understand is why somehow his shoes came off. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't know how his shoes were off. Where he had to tell the Secret Service, no, 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 let me get my shoes. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. How did that fucking happen? None of it makes sense. None of it makes None sense. None of it makes This is why, okay, okay, so I hear you on the rigged thing, I, but I kind of don't think it is. Yeah, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Because honestly, like, in order to rig, like, every county in America, like, it's not an open system. Like it's not yeah. on the internet. Do you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. yeah. yeah like yeah. the reason, like they were already preloading lawsuits to contest mm-hmm. ballots. Yes. And, so, and they started complaining about it being rigged until he started winning and then they stopped complaining about that. Yeah. And yeah. suddenly it was fair. Yeah. Like fun. Yeah. You know, if they thought that far ahead, I would say, you know what? Good work guys. That was a good detail. Yeah, no, they 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 actually <laughs> were like, she could win. It's a very, it's tied. All the polls are saying yeah. it's tied. Yeah, um, I mean, part of me is a little like that. I just feel disappointed that more people, like, were not engaged with sort of what he's all about. Yeah. Because, you know, and and I was talking, like, as I was talking to Andy Research today, he's getting a couple shout outs on the, mm-hmm. we were just saying how, like, you know, how divided the country is. And, mm. and he was making this amazing point about like, if I were to talk to one of my relatives who voted for him and, and say like, hey, you know, he's he's an imbecile. It's all like, a, it, it's not real or whatever. Yeah. You know, he's not real. <clears throat> like, like, oh, I know what it was. He asked me the question. What would it take for me... He's he's like, imagine this, like if someone asked you, what would it take for me to get you to vote for Trump? And like, can you think of anything? And I'm like, no, because I think he's full of shit. Yeah. And he's like a phony balloon. I mean, he's mm-hmm. like the man behind the, you know, mm-hmm. and he's like, that's how the other side, like the other side is also on that. Of course. Y- you know. Of course. But here's the thing, because I had this discussion with somebody else, I think with, with Justin, that, you know, the idea that, oh, they look at the Democrats the same way we look at Republicans, but the thing is... Who, who they, meaning the Republicans look at us. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. The thing is, is that all the shit that the Republicans claim is going to happen... When Democrats get in power, it never fucking happens. So like like a kid going to school. We don't have a, communism. We oh. don't have we don't they're not taking anybody's guns. Like all these things that they're worried about. It's not gonna be like drag queens are gonna be implanted in your churches or whatever. It's like all this made up shit. But the things that the Republicans are threatening to do, mm-hmm. they're going to do them. Right, they said they were going to overturn Roe, and they yeah. did. They did. So what? I mean, and they said they're going to give tax cuts to the rich. Yeah, and fuck y'all, y'all down. Yeah, yeah, below yeah. That. And they also they lie all the fucking time. Like all those, they lie all, all the those time. justices that that said Trump they were supports that were like it's settled uphold. law. It's settled law. Yeah, they were going to. Up- yeah. So it's like in Mitch McConnell. And they lied under oath, you know. But also like Mitch McConnell, like stealing judges, like not. Because yeah, Obama yeah, was yeah. an election year, but Absolutely. it was fine for Trump yeah. in a, and election And the Democrats year. always too, like, are you joking? They're too polite to just like try to ram shit through. You know what I mean? It's all the. I uh, mean, someone has to uphold the rules, I guess. Because if we ever get back to some, but there, norms, but there's ways to do it where you're still playing by the rules. You're just playing hardball. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
where it's like, I'm legally allowed to do this. I, I like, mean, honestly, Joe Biden should go fucking crazy. I guess I saw, unfortunately, I'm trying to, you know, step away from the, from the propaganda and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I did see a headline that said he was like rushing to protect the Arctic, whatever, from the drilling or some mm. shit like that. <laughs> Cause we are about like, like, it, it, you know, this is all about, Climate change is going to fucking, it's going to fuck everybody. Yeah. You know? Were you saying that Joe should resign and make Kamala the 47th president? Someone said that online. So then it would fuck up his hats? <laughs> yeah. I saw like a tweet or so, someone said, just just to fuck up his hats. Yeah. Because they say, <laughs> and make it like there was a first woman president for five seconds. True. Although I wonder if because he's the president elect, if he would still be counted as the 47th mm. and then she would be the 48th. I mean, look, no one's going to let that. I mean, it's just yeah. like, yeah, that's yeah. whatever. But yeah, I just am like, uh, I guess I vacillate to like you're saying uh, about feeling positive versus, you know, because mm-hmm. of what we're about to face. We don't yeah. know. Like for me, it's like. I just don't know what it looks like. Yeah. That's what I'm worried about because, yeah, yeah, yeah. and also they still haven't counted the house seats. Yeah. It's very tight. Mm-hmm. It might be red, mm-hmm. but there is like a path, I guess, through California I was reading, like, right. so, you know, and we're not fully counted here yet. We're like yeah. 65 or 70, 67% counted in California or something. Fingers fucking crossed, But man. like, it's sort of like, I just don't know what it looks like. Like, okay, I had to have a, like a service call with AT&T today. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, we're just chatting about the fucking weather or the phone or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, is this where at the end of the call, like in, in the new world order, mm-hmm. like he's like, okay, yeah. Like I was like, this guy's really nice. And I'm thinking, and then at the end he's like, okay, yeah. Well, okay. Hi, old Donald. What? Is he going to say, oh. <laughs> Heil Donald? And then now we're supposed to return that, like, Heil <laughs> Donald, so that we're not, like, rounded up by the SS or whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. I like, do. I vacillate between, like, oh, they can't t- topple an entire 200-year-old democracy in two right. years before the pendulum, you know, to we're going to have to say Well, they Heil. certainly can't do it by the end of the week <laughs> where you were on a call today. <laughs> Hi, Donald. I like how happy he says it, too. But, but you did have when you picked up your car. Okay, you had to drop oh, off your car. Well, now I don't know. Now I, something else happened in my car that made me question. Mm. Although this was, the, to be fair, to be fair, I bet your, I bet my first instinct was right. Mm. So it was election morning. My car wouldn't start, so I had to had to take it in to the dealership or whatever. And you know. One of my guilty pleasures is SXM, which if you don't know what that Why is. Why is it a guilty pleasure? Because it's like... A, it's the radio. <laughs> I know, but you have to pay. It's like having cable or something. Oh, okay. It's one of your extravagances. Yes, it's one of my extravagances. Mm. I freaking love SXM, though, because mm. you can go anywhere mm-hmm. and turn it on because it's satellite. Mm. And you can get in any car and, you know, Billy Joel Channel exactly. is, is right there. You know that Billy Joel Channel is there? So I was like, uh, so on, on the morning I was kind of hopping around, you know, C-SPAN, POTUS, Channel, CNN, on MSNBC. Second. Did I just say Billy Chol Channel? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you did, but now you did. I hope I didn't. I hope I didn't. Okay. You, you did What? I don't know. Anyway, so. <laughs> I'm saying that could be the title of the episode. <laughs> really? We, we can talk about that on Hi- the podcast. Not Heil Donald? No, no absolutely <laughs> not Heil Donald. 
I thought you were saying you were tired. <laughs> you thought I was just pausing to mouth to you, I'm tired. <laughs> Listen, don't tell anybody. <laughs> you're backlit when you're sitting. Oh. <laughs> anyway, my point is this. I had it on MSNBC. I had my digits. I had my presets, you know. Yeah. I was hopping yeah, yeah. around my presets on my SXM. Mm-hmm. And I pull into the dealership. I, I had my radio off. It does, you know, I had my radio off. And I was like, you know. I got to replace this battery. It's bad or whatever. And so I had to leave it overnight. I go home to watch Kamala Harris lose the election (laughs) with my husband and a group of my close friends. I go to the dealer. You dropped me off at the dealership the next day. Thank you for the ride. I love you. Thank you. (laughs) They bring my car around. It to start the car. <laughs> it was not on one of my preset channels. Mm-mm. The radio was on, mm-hmm. even though I dropped the car off with the radio off. Mm-hmm. And it was set to Fox News. Mm-hmm. And it felt pointed. Mm-hmm. And I thought... I felt like a message was being sent. First, it starts with that, and then it ends with Heil Donald, I think, because... <laughs> it starts with changing your presets, and it ends with Heil they, Donald. Now, they didn't make it a fave, because, uh, honestly, they would have had to unfave something to make it a fave, because right, my right, faves right. are full. Your faves full. are all locked in. They're locked in. They're full. Yeah. You had to make room for, you know? Yeah. But then I realized that also the date and time was showing up wrong, and I think when they set the reset the battery... It messed with the computer system a little. Did you have to reset your faves? No. So you're right. Someone did punch (laughs) it in. Someone punched it in. Do you think it's because you dropped your car off the dealership and said, I need to change this battery or whatever? (laughs) That's what you said in your story. And I was imagining if you'd said that in real life. (laughs) I need to change this battery or whatever. And you walk away. <laughs> All right, we should take, take a, a break. break. It's time for it's time for a little. We're gonna have a little sidebar, and we'll be right back. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Urgent. Do you live in Charleston, South Carolina, or the surrounding areas? Well, then why don't you come to see my show, Variatopia, with Paul F. Tompkins? I'm um, him. At the Charleston Music Hall on Saturday, November 23rd. It's going to be a show that you won't soon forget. It's a very fun show. I did it at the Music Farm uh, last year, and we're coming back to a bigger venue with an all new show, all new guests, all new material. It's a variety show, music, comedy. I do stand up. It's a really fun time, and I urge you. To come. It's a big house, and we still got plenty of tickets left. Go to pauleftompkins.com slash live and get your tickets now. Beedee, 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 beedee. Yeah, we're back. We're back. You know what? We were just talking about... We're better than ever. What? And better than ever? Yeah. No. Do you think that's true? No. <laughs> we're the same. We're back and the same as ever. Yeah, what were we just talking about? We were talking off mic about... How I'm cold. Usually you're the cold one. Correct. But I am a little chilly. Mm. And my feetsies are cold. Well, put some damn socksies on. Well, I have to do socks. Here's what I would like, though. Okay. I would like a pair of slippers Mm. that you can wash. Yeah. So they don't stink. Yeah. Because I think I have, I don't think my feet smell. Okay. But I think I do have like a sweating issue with sleppers. Sleppers. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but here's the thing. Then you wash them and they never get fully, completely dry. Mm-hmm. Or they start to fall apart. Mm-hmm. And I've tried a few different things, mm-hmm. a few different t- brands. I think I know what you need. What do I need? 
I think you need those slipper socks. <sighs> with the grippies on the bottom. Yeah. I get why you don't want those. Those are hard to find the correct size. But I get why you don't want those because you want to be able to just slip into your feet into something. Yeah. And you want to be able to walk easy outside in, a little out. bit or inside. Like you got to go grab queen. something. Off yes, the- Mudang. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if anyone knows of anything, get up in our comment section. Yeah, man. By get the way, the Substack comments. do you guys know about our comment section? Maybe you don't. But if you're listening to this Stay of Homekins podcast and mm-hmm. you're a subscriber, number one, thank you. We appreciate you. Honestly, I was really looking forward to this episode all week because I have been feeling like a lot of fear mm-hmm. and kind of defeat and like disappointment. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm trying not to be too disappointed in my fellow man because I'm like, you know, there's like, His, you know, militia or whatever, who Mm. I don't agree with, or his, you know, crazy, demented billionaire people or whatever. But then there are people like who I talked to the other day, they're just like, oh, did something happen? Like, for real. Like, Mm -hmm. they they have no fucking clue. Like, that's like shit is going on in the world that could shape like their daily lives. And like, and well, um, like, a lot of people are going to die over this. Like... Mm-hmm. In Ukraine and in Gaza and all yeah. that stuff. So, um, and I know that we've ended, uh, you know, but like to reverse that policy, you needed someone that was not him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, he's definitely not going to do it. Oh, no. Do you know, like, BB Netanyahu was the first to graduate. Oh, yeah. Graduate. Yeah, yeah, of okay. course. Well, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I can't get into, I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't like to speak on such things too much because I am not like a huge student of like global politics and I actually kind of, recoil when people know a little bit about it and they speak like they teach it at a, uni- <laughs> yeah. at a university. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. that's like, I feel so hyper sensitive about coming off like that or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, I'm saying I was very much like thinking about how, you know, and I, te- I remember I, te- I was gone. I texted you and I was like, Oh, I want to make more like comfort content because someone had, someone wrote like a nice, like comment on one of our posts, one of our podcasts, bonus content, uh, bonus podcasts and said, I'm now giving my Washington post subscription money to you guys. And I'm excited to listen to the watch. I saw that, yeah. You know, and, I, and, and it made me think like, you know, I kind of want to double down on like, I don't know what that is yet and mm-hmm. what our lives are going to be or look like, honestly. Yeah. And, um, but like, during the pandemic, like I felt like this was a comfort to me mm-hmm. and it was fun to put, put this show out For and sure. have this show and still have it going, yeah. you know, and other people said that they also felt that way. So I had to take them at their word. I'm not trying to be, you know, like egotistical about it, but mm-hmm. people have expressed that it was a comfort to them. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, maybe that's where we go is like we go toward creating creating stuff, creating community, like staying kind of open. Yeah. Staying open. Yeah, yeah. Staying open and connected. But um, this is all a very long and meandering way to tell you <laughs> that if you know of slippers like that Paul would like, <laughs> that there is a comment section. Yes. And you might subscribe to this podcast and not understand that we have this whole other life going on on Substack. <laughs> yeah. And our Substack is weekendwater.substack.com. And if you subscribe, there's many tiers. You can do the paid tier or the free tier. I guess there's only two tiers. But there's, <laughs> I was going to say, when you said many, it's like, what's really, in the middle? I, there's some people who are founding member, members, mm-hmm. but, you know. And... Uh, you will be alerted when there's episodes, free episodes, bonus episodes, whatever, Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But one of the benefits of subscribing is when we post the podcast through our Substack portal, which, yes, does hit your podcast apps as well because it it distributes it. But if you want to have a conversation... About the episode. Yes, you can talk with community. other people about there the episode. There is a comment section yes. under every 
episode we put out. Yeah. And that's why when I say get up in that comment section, I'm not, it's not a joke. It, it's literal. I know a lot of people thought you were kidding. Like that we really do have a comment section. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if, if you got, if you, if anybody's in the same boat as me and you found a slipper that you love, please let me know. And that you can please launder. That you love and you can launder. Yeah. Or one that I don't have to launder because it is it antimicrobial. Antimicrobial. You get a tariff. You get a tariff. <laughs> you get a tariff. <laughs> you get a tariff. So also Halloween. <laughs> Sorry. We just had Halloween last week. I had to say it. You had to say it. We had Halloween. Oh, and I want to talk about something. Which was um uh, which was fun. We got a bunch of kids. We had more kids, I think, this year than we have. We did because they started that fucking block party a few yeah. blocks away. And I was so fucking pissed last year. I had all this candy left over. I and I was like, well, I'm only going to buy the one bag of candy this year. And what do you know? We ran out of and candy. we ran out? Because I forgot out. about the big kids at like 830. The teenagers that show up in hoodies and they're like, trick or treat. They always remember to say trick or treat. <laughs> um, but I don't we, judge but yeah. them. I don't judge them because, like, sometimes I don't fucking care. Yeah, well, I don't fucking care. Show I don't. Up, you get candy. No, but I fucking you know people do have like opinions about it, and it annoys me because I'm like sometimes they can be like literally 14 years old and look like they're yeah 19 years. You do you know, remember so we you had a full grown? No, we had an adult lady that came one year. She wore like a cowgirl outfit. I don't remember, but I, I like it all. I, I like, like it all. Thing. She was just a grown woman. I'm like, you know what? You put on a costume, <laughs> you showed up, here you go. I would also say this. This First of all, I want to say the block party thing, from a parent's perspective, of course, I get it. It makes things so much One easier. One and done. One, and, One done. and done. But from a kid perspective, the walking around to different houses – and outside your own neighborhood and everything, or like covering your entire it's neighborhood. Cool. It's, it's fun. Great. It's really fun. It teaches better social skills too. I don't know about that, but sure. I think it does. It teaches better social skills and, and how? Because like they don't like fear like interacting with like strange strangers. <laughs> Is that bad? Oh, oh wait, like maybe a, that's bad. It's a little bit because our children's was a fear. It's a little bit of independence thing. if you can be with a gang of kids. But like also around. sometimes like there's like a little tiny kid and they're like, go ahead, you can go yeah, up, yeah, say yeah. it, you know. Yeah. Oh, what about that little guy? He had on what was the question mark suit? Oh, the Riddler. He was like this little there toddler little and he had like a full, like it was oh like tailored God. to his, his. Yeah, he had a little double breasted question mark suit. Size. And a little bowler hat, a little mask. I don't He was rem- adorable. I don't remember. I was just like impressed he with his. He was a little look. tiny Riddler. Yeah. It was, it was fun. And we had the World Series and our friends, we had our World Series pod. I mean, our friends it's in the funny, neighborhood like, came I'm over. not, I'm forgetting all of these nice things that happened yeah. because Tuesday sucked so fucking hard. Yeah. But let's remember them. But like, it was time. like my birthday and my, and my, okay. We had so a lovely dinner for your birthday. My dear friends are, are, our neighbors, Catherine, my, one of my close friends, Catherine, her, uh, her partner, Mike, Ben and Julie, our neighbors, Ben and Julie, mm. they're like, they were our, what we were, cause they were kind of our COVID pod. Yes. So then we watched the world series every night at our house. Mm-hmm. And then we started calling ourselves our World Series pod. That's right. Like, this is our World Series pod. Mm-hmm. In the middle of the World Series was my birthday, and they insisted on taking me to a very lovely restaurant nearby mm. that I was like, you guys, that's too much. And they're like, no, we're going to do it. We're gonna do it. <laughs> and so they, we all went to... With the World Series pod for my birthday to the restaurant, we had the game. You had it kind of running, not not audibly, but no, you I could had, see I the, had the updates, MLB app that, that, that has a little animated play by play of the game. Okay. So we were watching that. Yeah. It was very exciting. Yeah. And so it was just like really fun. And that was fun. And then. I was trying to think there was, I feel like there was something else when you started talking about, oh, I know what it was. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
that I knew I really wanted to talk about on this pod. I bet I know what it is. Yes. But the- I couldn't talk about it in on the last pod because it happened between then and now. Right. Which is... The substance. <laughs> How did you know? I knew. Honey. Okay. I just knew. Okay. So I... So... There's this horror movie, guys. Okay, you probably already know. But we're gonna. There's gonna be some spoiler talk. Y- are we? Yes. If you you're haven't right. seen it, there, there, we're, we're, gonna we're going to talk about the movie. We're going to talk about the movie, The Substance. So don't listen if you don't like spoilers from now until a few minutes from now. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, so okay. So um, I kind of wanted to see the movie. Wait, I can't remember how it became like I wanted to see the movie. Yeah, I don't remember how you heard about it because I think you told me about it. Or did we discover it together? Did we see an ad for it or something? Or? I kind of knew it was existing like a long time ago from like the oh, film. Oh, really? Oh, I think okay. like it can or something. Mm-hmm. Like I knew there was this body horror thing and I was like, I'm not going to see that because mm-hmm. I'm not like a big body horror thing. Nor am I. Mm. Now I'm remembering. <laughs> My therapist told me. <laughs> 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 All right. And, okay. And this is crazy, <laughs> but my friend Jen, we go to the same therapist. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we go to the same therapist. And I was like, I really wanted to see it. You were gone. You were out of town. Yes. And I was like, I really want to see it. And I was like, can, will anyone go see this movie with me? And Jen was like, I'll go see it with you. Mm-hmm. But I can't go until this day, and I was like, "All right." So we so we make this these plans mm-hmm. to go. Like there was like a matinee, mm-hmm. which was great because it was like matinee prices, mm-hmm. and we went to see this movie, The Substance, which is this French or it's a it's a French director, who, her a director who a woman directed it. It stars Demi Moore. And Margaret Qualley. And it is about, it is a body horror movie, but it is like, it's pretty gross. Like, I'm going to, like, you should yeah, know the, it's gross. The horror that happens is horrific. Is gross, yeah. yeah. But if you subtract the horror, which is heightening everything, by mm-hmm. the way. Like, for me, this was such a great horror movie experience. Like, I've had a few, like, in the theater like that Mm -hmm. in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. But um, I loved this movie so much. Jen and I loved it so much. Like we were watching this movie, like we were like on such an emotional ride, Mm -hmm. like through the whole thing. Like I was covering my eyes a bunch, (laughs) you know, I was like, what? Like we were reacting and I like, there were times we were laughing, Mm -hmm. you know, like, cause there's like some comedic Kind of. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, parts of it. Yeah. And at one time I turned to her and I was like, are we watching the greatest movie that's ever been made? <laughs> like, I couldn't believe how, I mean, first of all, like it or out the gate, it's styled in a way that is like, it. Rem- I'm, I'm a big Stanley Kubrick fan. Like The Shining is one of my favorite movies. Mm-hmm. We just did a watch along of it. It's instantaneously nodding to Kubrick. Like they immediately, Mm -hmm. like in the first like five minutes of the movie, they go in this red and white bathroom that is almost like it's the same stylistically as the red and white bathroom in the shine. Even for the bathroom, you get that hallway. Oh, the hallway with the carpet and the 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 door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was just like, okay, I'm so on board for this. Like what, I don't know what ride I'm about to go on, but I'm totally on board for this. Mm And, um, so it's basically kind of like, it has all of these amazing themes, which are like the, the journey of being a woman, Mm -hmm. the, the journey of, you know, maybe body dysmorphia, Mm -hmm. um, maybe the journey of like beauty, uh, pressures and Mm -hmm. beauty privilege and, and, or maybe it's you know, about menopause. Mm-hmm. I like at one point I was like, this is the definitive menopause movie, mm-hmm. like 100, you know, but it's like all of these things and the scare. Oh, cuckoo, double cuckoo, double, double cooks. 
the scare of the movie, mm-hmm. which I thought was so wonderful, and I'm sure this is an, a trope of horror movies or whatever, is not anything external. It's all internal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's about how, like, you are your own scariest monster. Yes. And I was just like fucking blown away. And mm-hmm. I and it was very um wild, like big wild swings and not there's not any subtlety in it. And no, I didn't it is, care. Yeah. I it's, loved it. It's like it. a a sort of you know, hyper reality or something. Oh, and it's also like it's a definitely its own created world because it takes yeah. place in Hollywood and it's very like just off and weird enough from Hollywood to be like not Hollywood. And then I read that they filmed it in the South of France right? and that it was like all of these deliberate choices Mm -hmm. were made in the, in the film to like kind of put you in this strange world. Yeah. Like early on you see what uh, the assembly of what looks to be a star on the Hollywood walk of fame. Yes. And then you see it like as it's implanted and you know the celebration it's all from overhead you're just looking at the star and then you see years go by uh, as this star is on the sidewalk and people walking over it people Dropping getting their pictures cash taken with on it. it then people ignoring it yeah yeah um and at one point it there's snow <laughs> So that's right, when like you know, okay, this is not it. this is not completely yeah. our universe. This is a heightened kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, I I really loved it. So you saw it without me. I saw. Oh, so yeah, I yeah. went and saw it without you. And then after, and then so many amazing things happened in the movie. I guess that we're not fully spoiling it as much as we're critiquing it, or or sort just, of like, yeah, we're just discuss, discussing yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, we walk out of the movie, and I was like. Oh my God, I need a cocktail. Like mm-hmm. in general, I need a cocktail. Yeah. So we sat down and like, just, we talked about it and I don't know, like this movie stayed with me in a way where I was like preaching, like proselytizing about it. Yeah. yeah I was yeah. like, but not a lot of people are into horror movies. And so I found out like a lot of people I know, like it was like a big heavy lift for them and they're just not going to, I mean, I, oh, and I didn't, sure. I didn't push yeah. it on them. I was just like, basically like, this is what, how I felt about the movie. And I wanted it was a little too far for some people to, yeah. to be able to receive it and also be okay with all the shit that was happening. Cause there's a lot of gross stuff happens. Yeah. But, but I think in a weird way, cause, um, cause Ben saw it too. And I was like, Ben, what did you think? He was like, it was really stylized. And I was like, it was stylized. And somehow that made it easier for me. And I did look away at the gross out stuff. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Because like when I see those gross out things, mm. like, it's so visceral. I have to look away. The only thing I looked away from the entire movie, because I'm not a body horror guy either. Like, I know I don't, what you're going to say, and I actually think yeah. this is the grossest part as well. Dennis Quaid eating shrimp. Yeah, that was the grossest It was so fucking, fucking disgusting. Gross. It was so... I, I honestly, I, I like, like looked I off to the side. I have not eaten shrimp since that movie. <laughs> I have not eaten shrimp since that movie. Yeah. He really ruined shrimp for everybody. It was so fucking gross. Like it, so it was disgusting. the other uh, was another like sequence with food that was gross that grossed me out with the chicken and Oh, the, that was that was nothing compared to Dennis Quaid in I my opinion. I couldn't I couldn't look at it. Like yeah. I couldn't look at some of it. Like but anyway, like I was just telling Ben like how stylized it was helped me kind of immerse myself in the yeah. movie because Because you feel the filmmaking a little bit more. You feel like I'm showing you this for a reason. Yes. You know? Yes. And it makes it, it, it removes it a little bit from reality so that you're not caught up in the disgustingness of it. Or just like being frightened. Yeah. Like yeah, you yeah. are in, immersed in the movie and you're going along without skin and you know s- bad things are going to happen mm. just because she's making all of these choices that are really bad yeah. choices for her self like her mental health her her existence you know and so you know like it's just you just sort of like like you kind of are like oh this isn't going to end well for you (laughs) like you can you can feel it coming and it's very predictable that it's not going to end well for her but then you don't know how that is going to manifest and then the payoff 
when it finally manifests was delightful. It was really amazing. I so I I went and saw it um Halloween day. I know cuz I made Paul I was like please I need you to you go You didn't s- make me do anything. <laughs> I wanted to see it. Well, I <laughs> Yeah, how were you involved in my seeing it? <laughs> You're trying to figure out a way to put yourself in there. <laughs> I was involved. Sure. I was Definitely involved. You were, you were my biggest cheerleader for I seeing was that movie. Defi- I was like, police. Well, I was kind of like, it was true that I was a little bit like bursting at the seams around the house. Because you wanted to talk about because it. Because I wanted yeah. to discuss the yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. And it was like. That's I such could, a specific feeling. Yeah. And I was like, but I also like didn't want to be too revealing so that. You went and you're like, what the fuck was she so excited about? No, you didn't give anything away. And uh, so I went, I I always forget, but I think I'll remember this time, how fun it is to go to the movies by yourself sometimes. I like it. I used to do it a lot yeah. myself. I, it's, I, I don't know. It's like from, so, I think we're, we're brought up with the idea that going to the movies is a thing you do with other people. Yeah. But it's great to go by yourself. So yeah, it's I, like Don Draper. I mean, in Mad Men, <laughs> so true. I mean, I was a big movie goer. It's funny because I don't go anymore. Mm-hmm. I think first of all, the streaming boom kind of like got me off of going. Yeah, same. Yeah. Then COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then COVID, and now I'm like, but you know, the ArcLight that was my place. The ArcLight was so good. I had a membership there. So I went, I was in a smaller theater and... I don't think they showed it on a big one, on a big, big one. Oh, okay. The movie was supposed to start at 1230. I walk, (laughs) I walk in at 1230 and um, the only other people in there are two other dudes and we're all (laughs) spread out, right? Yeah. And waiting for the movie to start. Like five, twelve thirty-five, nothing has happened on the screen, and an usher comes in and says, "Hey, sorry, um, uh, the movie hasn't started yet. They're rebooting the system or something like that." I'm like, "Okay." So we're waiting. Still, nothing's happening. Five more minutes go by. Two women come in. Okay. They like look around. They walk out. What? And I'm like, <laughs> "What does that mean?" <laughs> they 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 were in their well, wrong thing. I don't know because then two women eventually came in, but I couldn't be sure it was the same two women. Okay, and there's like 25 minutes of uh, trailers before. Not this-, this time. Here's what happened. They started this shit. Eventually, more people came in. Two women came in. Another two couples. Not not a packed house, but. Enough, you know, to have fun. Movie starts. We don't get any trailers. We don't get shit. It starts halfway through the Nicole Kidman AMC speech. Oh, I thought you were about to say through the movie or something. Halfway through Nicole. Oh, they reround. Yeah, because the Nicole Kidman speech is right before it starts. And then the movie. Okay. And... I, they forgot to run the trailers, I bet you. No, I think it was just like, it's late. Like, this movie is supposed to have started by now. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they didn't have the trailers. I don't know. Um, But I really enjoyed this movie. I loved it. I had I such lo- a great time. <laughs> I was so relieved that I you liked it. I thought the performances were Catherine was really too. terrific. She was like, I'm, I was worried about your marriage if Paul didn't like it. <laughs> I there was a there was so much to think about in the way it, it presented so many different ideas to kind of muse on and was as as a man was still very relatable. You I know? knew you would relate to yeah. it because yeah, 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 I yeah. do think that just there is so much there's so much messaging yeah. that we can't just be comfortable in our you But know? you know what? I think it was easier I, I could be wrong, but I would bet that because I'm the age that the I age am. The age that you are now. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it is about like midlife. 
It is about midlife. It's about how society sees us. It's funny. I thought it was really interesting that there's a lot of stuff that's very male gazy. Oh, that's the whole thing is male gaze, and then they make a joke on you at the end. Yes, but it's like a parody of the male gaze. Yeah. Oh, I knew you would like those parts. (laughs) I was like, all those close ups of Margaret Qualley's butt. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I mean, come on. We all liked it. We all were looking at her like that. Sure. That was the idea. But it was was funny that it, like, it's like, is this what you want? Here's here's a ton of it. We're just gonna have endless shots of her like exercise <laughs> these shaking exercise. her ass at, yeah. and, and yeah, yeah, looking yeah. at you with a come hither like yeah, yeah, yeah. come fuck me yeah. look all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the ending, the last like twenty five minutes of that movie. The is last so twenty five minutes of that movie. It's so like, funny. I was clutching Jen and I was like, What is happening? <laughs> I was like, What's happening? Like, yeah. what is this? What the fuck is this? Yeah. And I, and it was so, it was so funny. It was so funny. It was so funny. Yeah. It was like, you looked at her in this way, this avatar of perfect beauty, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which is Demi Moore and Margaret Qualley. And it's, I guess this is a spoiler, but they are the same person but it's the different. same consciousness yes there's different yes yes it goes back and facets, forth between facets of two them. bodies yeah and there was a big portrait of demi moore which was sort of like um dorian gray kind of thing <laughs> yeah and then there was a big billboard of mark Qualley outside the mm. window which was sort of like the eyes of gatsby mm-hmm. uh, you know the gatsby mm-hmm. the doctor in the great gatsby yeah. doctor yeah, yeah. eyeglass i don't remember the name yes. yeah it was just like all of these things of like our literature and it, it it was like a modern literature ma- masterpiece. I'm sorry, I really do think it was a I, modern literature. I, piece. I really, <laughs> I, I really think it was an amazing movie, like not just an amazing horror movie, but an amazing movie. an amazing movie. Yeah, I cla- loved watching it. An instant it. classic. Yeah, an uh, yeah, instant, an instant classic. classic. I loved watching it. Like I it loved looked it. so amazing, and when you know when. There's a certain thing in in a horror movie or even in an action movie where the movie at the end is just like top, top, topping itself. It's like, we're going to go here, and you think that's as far as you can go, but guess what? We're going to go here. We have an imagination that exceeds anything that you can imagine. And you feel that build, and it really makes me laugh when, when you're aware of... You sort of feel the filmmaker's joy in presenting you with this insanity. You the know? way that the way it portrays like aging is so real, though. Like, mm-hmm. there's a part where her hand turns into a crone's hand, mm-hmm. like an old crone, and she's trying to like cover her hand. And I've looked at my hands no. and have seen no, but women, this is. Women do. This is the experience of of a woman. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm saying, oh. but I'm saying it happens to a lot of sure, women, you sure. know, that have attachment to their, you know, youthful looks or whatever, yes. you know. Because I mean, it is like it is a brutal thing to be attached to your youthful looks. Mm-hmm. Like you shouldn't be. Yeah. Because, and my mom would always like she would always be like, you know. You it's this beauty is not in it's not gonna last yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like you better mm-hmm. you better think of other ways to enjoy things. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know? Like think of other ways to enjoy things. <laughs> well, I mean like <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. But it and it's true, like that is something like yeah, I don't know. I just thought it was great. I mm. loved I loved the payoff. I loved like Spraying the audience with blood at the end, <laughs> like that was. I was it's like, so funny, because and oh, it was like clearly like a very carry like, uh, yeah, absolutely, like denouement or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. you know. But it was like, to me, it was like the blood of all women's periods, <laughs> you know, because yeah. like Carrie is like the pig's blood because of yeah. her period. Plug it up, or, but I was like, this is. Every- I don't think the pig's blood was because of her period. I thought it was an unrelated. 
prank. I don't think it was like a callback to, hey, remember how she got her period in gym? <laughs> Let's dump Are you that. sure? I never made that connection. You know, we did a, didn't we do a watch along? We Carrie? did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we need to watch it and queue up our watch along <laughs> again. I was like, but I was like, I turned uh, after the movie, I turned to Jen and I said, because this was before the election, mm-hmm. I was like, I want election night to be this scene <laughs> where all of women's period blood <laughs> are sprayed all over all the men who want to take our rights away and we prevail or whatever. Like I was feeling like that empowered after. Mm-hmm. And then that didn't happen. The period blood ha- didn't happen either. Period blood did not happen. That blood coming out of her eyes or whatever, <laughs> out of your God. eyes or whatever. Sorry, that was like a Trump thing. In the de- when he debated Hillary Clinton, yeah, he said it to Megyn Kelly, who couldn't wait to like snuggle. No, he said up it to about Megyn Kelly. Yeah, and she couldn't wait to snuggle up to him. I know this election I season. Know. Anyway, anyway, that's the substance. Do you have more to say about feeling the how how it spoke to like your age and? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I it it spoke to um, not just my age, but be- because of my age, I could appreciate the commentary about society because uh, from the vantage of being alive for as long as I have um, to, to have a perspective on both characters and understanding, you know, it was pretty visceral at times. What um, would you take the substance? No, (laughs) I tell you what though, if I did, And I had a little secret room in my apartment. (laughs) I would set up two little like cots or something. A couple divans side by side. Instead of laying on the floor somewhere? Yes. But look how we treat ourselves. Yeah, there's no that there was no comfort in that bathroom. Look how we treat ourselves. And the lighting in that bathroom I thought was one of the scariest things in the movie. Pretty extreme. Very fluorescent guys. Yeah, it was Demi great. Moore and Margaret Qualley were so good. Yeah, they, they really them. both were terrific. All the supporting men were so good, so well cast. They were so weird, they like were, the way people spoke and everything. Yes. It was like it was great. Like how women were perceiving their energies and stuff. It was like <laughs> yeah. it w- and it felt like scary all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. It was like. It was, I loved it so much. All right. Well, if you've seen Substance the movie, talk over. you can get up in the comment section. <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers, though. At our weekend water. Oh, what do you think is the, is the cutoff for spoilers? How old does something have to be before you feel like, I can talk about this like people's other time? I think a year. I, I kind of feel that way, but I'm, I'm willing to be generous and say... Like a big, it happened. I feel like it happens less with big, big, like gigantic smash hit movies, mm-hmm. and more with movies that are kind of well regarded. That that seems a worse thing to spoil. What's worse to spoil? I think the small movies well regarded is worse to spoil. That's what I'm saying. Oh yeah, yeah. That that's that's when I could see because getting mad about smash- like I haven't see, I want to see that. Yeah, I feel like the big s- smash hit movies are super predictable and you're going for different reasons. That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 But I, I, yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like the, the most generous I can be is five years. That's really generous. Yeah. But it's also wow. five years is a long time. If you haven't seen it in five years, if you haven't seen it in a year, I feel like you might get to it very soon. I feel like society has evolved Mm -hmm. to develop more sensitivity to spoilers. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think so. I think it's just that the spoiler people are very upset and very vocal about when they perceive a spoiler has been occurring. I unfriended a guy on Facebook years ago for spoil for spoiling something that happened in the wire. Yeah. I think you did the right thing. Yeah. Um 
Do you have any recommendations? The Wire, if you haven't <laughs> seen it. You know what? Sure. <laughs> Go check it out. So many people said I had to read Miranda July's book and I'm halfway through. No spoilers, please. Um, I think both Lily and Jess were reading that book on tour. Everyone told me I had to read it. It's filthy, that book. I know all about it. Oh, you already know about it? I know that it's dirty. That's all I know. How did you know that? Because they told me. <laughs> Wait, was that why people were wanting me to read it? Because it was dirty? Because I didn't know it was dirty. And then I got in the middle of it. And I was like, oh, it's kind of dirty. Yeah. I don't know if... I can't say why people wanted you to read it specifically. <laughs> <laughs> But we got on. The reason I knew that it was dirty it was because at the very start of the trip, we saw someone in the airport, a woman reading some fantasy novel, right? Alien BC. What is that alien shit that Paget sends us all the time? <laughs> she sends us all the time. She's always like, I need some alien porn <laughs> to read or whatever. She did send us a recommendation. Or about the beast. <laughs> so I think was, it, was it just called The Beast? <laughs> and it's a guy who looks like a minotaur or something. <laughs> it's like a, that's that's a tough one. Like the beast who was sort of like almost a lion man. <laughs> like I could see that easier than a guy who's got a fucking well, the bull lion, head. Yeah, the lion man beast was still good looking, right? That's what I'm saying. That's an easier one to do than a guy who's got a bull head. I think if you're making the beast and the beauty and the beast kind of um, like he's sort of handsome as the lion yeah. man, yeah, yeah. that defeats the purpose of the okay of the story. No, I mean I thought that the moral of the story was beauty well, I, is only yeah, of course. But I've never the only I, there was one adaptation of it. A TV series came out a couple of years ago, and that was and I think of course they fucking said it in high school or some shit, and. The Beast had, like, a couple scars on his face. <laughs> and that was it. Do you think that's how they pitched it in the The room? Beast! Yeah. They're like, They're like Beauty <laughs> and the Beast, but The Beast this the time... The twist is... The twist. <laughs> are you ready? The twist is... I'll let my writing partner tell you. He's ho- barely a beast. He's just got a couple scars. Wait here, guys. I want to go upstairs and talk to my boss. We're interested. <laughs> you have to buy it right now or I, we'll walk. I'll buy it in the room. There we go. Can it be scars mm-hmm. as his barely beasts? Yes, it can be scars as his barely Here's beasts. Here's some extra money. Why do we sound drunker? <laughs> Being sober. Um, oh, wait. We so we found out about... So this woman in the airport is reading this fantasy book, which we find out uh, from Jess, who is very knowledgeable about this, is that that is in the sort of dirty fantasy... Uh, what is... I forget what it's called. There's a, there's, a, there's a term for it. Like, not rom-com, but there's a... For this specific genre. Pant-fant? <laughs> yeah, pant-fant. <laughs> <laughs> so you've heard of this. <laughs> Wait, what? It, so, it's so like, then we realize, okay, it's, if you see somebody reading these books, because it's a whole series of books and all the covers look the same except they're different colors, you're like, I know you're reading dirty stuff right now. You're reading dirty stuff about it's fairies It's like when and people shit. were reading 20, 20 Shades of Grey on the. 20? <laughs> it wasn't warm. Under it, Joe Biden, it's 50. <laughs> We need the shades of gray back down. Oh my god. Shades of gray are too high. <laughs> shades of gray. <laughs> uh no no incumbent post pandemic has gotten reelected. Like in the world like it's trend in the world. The trend in, in the world, world history. No, in this moment, in this geopolitical moment. Oh, I see what <laughs> 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 I thought we were going like as far back as, as we could. Uh, to all the pandemics, all the pandemics, all the we've worldwide had. pandemics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yes, in this current moment, no incumbent, no post COVID incumbent has been reelected. Who's, what about France? Isn't it Macron? Listen, I only repeat things I see headlines about. I don't do any deeper. You know what? That's all right by me. Here's my recommendation. Season two of Very Important People has begun on mm. Dropout. Explain to the listeners what Dropout is. Dropout is a streaming platform um, I that I really enjoy. I've made a few appearances on a few shows. And it's I have an another all one coming comedy up. Pl- it's, it's all comedy. Yeah. All original comedy that yes. they that they generate. And it's very independent. It's really it's really very cool. Um, and this show, very important people, is hosted by uh, a really talented comedian named Vic Michaelis. They're the host, and then they bring on an improviser who has been put into elaborate makeup and wardrobe. Um, while not being able to see what they are going to be, then they are presented with a mirror, and they're like, "This is what you look like." And then the improviser has to come up with a character based on what they for the look interview. Like. Yes, and it's done sort of like a serious interview. Yes, and it's a it's a you know a parody of interview shows like a and, Charlie Ro- like yeah, and and it's all improvised. So when you watch the show, um, just know that it's all improvised. And edited and Who created it's so that show? Funny. I don't know. I actually don't know. I'll have to look at the credits. Huh. I'm not yeah, I'm not sure if Vic co created it or it was all their idea or I have no idea. Well, anyway, you are appearing on it? Is that I am appearing on it later this season, yes. You are allowed to yeah, it was yes. announced. So Do season you know? two started, It uh, first episode is up, extremely funny with Anna Garcia as this rock person. Oh, it, I, I, I'm going to watch it again. It really made me laugh. Oh, good. And then I will be appearing, I don't know when, but it's every other Thursday as um, quite a strange character. I'm excited about your episode. It was really fun to do. I had really good time doing Recommendation that. wise, I feel like, you know, like you saying you're going to watch that again because it was such a funny episode and Mm. you know now i'm reading dirty books i guess (laughs) (laughs) and like getting you know going back to the theater to see movies in the theater like the substance and stuff i feel this impulse as part of the self-care over the chaos that's coming down the road Mm -hmm. with these current events Mm -hmm. this impulse to kind of lean into comfort activities Mm -hmm. like um you know, podcasts that aren't, you know, maybe current events yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff, you know, or, and reading and stuff. Anyway, I was just saying that sort of, I just want to acknowledge, I know we had like a lot of fun on this podcast and it was like an outlet, but I just want to acknowledge that a lot of people are probably feeling a lot of things Yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we are too. We're just mm-hmm. trying to get by with our stupid clowning around. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, there are people, you know, friends of ours that their future feels very um, scary um, because yeah. of some of the rhetoric, um, of course, all the horrible online stuff. So who knows? But for anybody who is in a marginalized community, um I would like to say I don't believe that you cost us this election. I don't think folk I don't think giving you any focus no, caused all, us to lose. It's I, all propaganda. I it's also think like propaganda. I don't think that the the I have to say I don't think the democratic message was focused on identity politics. Um it was sort of just focused on hey, we're already here, you know us. This is good, this is good, this is good, whatever with a little bit of and we're going to protect women's rights to choose. And I thought, you know. like, to me, like, when they they announced their platform and they started talking about increasing the housing supply. Yeah. Like, I thought that was kind of major. Yeah. Like, I don't remember in my lifetime. Yeah. The federal government talking about increasing on a federal level, you yeah. know, yeah, increasing yeah, yeah. housing because there's a shortage. Yeah. And there is a shortage. Yeah. 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 
I just was like, oh yeah, that's, we kind of like, let's use our tax dollars for that. Yeah. Well, I, but I, you know? yeah, but this is all to say, you know, you are not the problem and we're on your side. Absolutely. I mean, I am going to try to stay vigilant Mm-hmm. And again, sanity is resistance, as my brother told me. Mm-hmm. I I'm not even drinking right now. I'm kind of I'm trying to stay clear eyed. Yeah, I think we said that at the beginning. But yeah, 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 yeah. But because I sounded drunk right now, I wanted to say. <laughs> I just wanted to say it again because yeah. I'm really tired. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. But yeah, so but that's you know, tune in and. We might have more. We don't know what our new comfort content run is going to be right. quite yet, but um, we we will be doing stuff either way. Thank you for being here. Take care of yourself. Do what you need to do, and be kind mm-hmm. to people. Yes, that they must not take that away. Yes. from us. Very true. Um, Until then, stay Stay safe, safe, stay stay sane, and and stay stay strong. strong.